Hello, I'm Lynn and I'm from the Exmoor Youth Project and I'm lucky enough today to be able to be in St Andrew's Church in Minehead and some of you might recognise this building from maybe coming to do collective worship, coming for a service or possibly even just coming to our after school club which as you know is not running at the moment. So I thought while it was nice and quiet in here I might have a chat with you about friendship. We all have friends, whether we're teachers or pupils or adults or children, we all have friends. And I'd like you to just think for a moment about how you became friends with someone. How did you become friends with someone? Hmm. I'd like to take this opportunity now to introduce you to a friend of mine. Hello, I am Jules. I work for Minehead Parish as their children and families worker. And I'm also very, very blessed to be able to call Lynn, my colleague, my best friend. Jules, can I ask you a question? You can, Lynn. What do you think makes a friendship? Ooh, that's a tricky one. I think sometimes friendship involves having a similar personality, maybe sharing likes and dislikes, mm interests and hobbies yeah so mm, we have interests and hobbies in common don't we? we do obviously it's locked down at the moment but normally Lynn and I would be off exploring for the weekend we take ourselves off to a different beach to explore it or walk some of the southwest coastal path we've also got other things in common haven't we Lynn yeah we also have uh, our faith we both we both work for churches so it's nice to be able to have that in common. It means we can talk about our work as, as well as things that we enjoy. I have to admit, though, we do really share a common interest in our like of chocolate. Oh, we do like chocolate. So do you have a best friend? And why are you best friends? I'll give you a moment just to think about that. Do you have a best friend? And why are you best friends? And I've got a question for you as well. Can you have more than just one friend? Mm. Personally, I think it's quite nice to have a big group of friends. Everybody brings something slightly different to a friendship. And also, you might have people that you've got one person you're close to, but there might be other people you enjoy playing with in the playground, or maybe talking to about different things. You might have more than one person that you know who shares those similar interests and hobbies that you do. But a strong Friendship enjoys, involves actions, doing something for someone else while expecting nothing in return. That's quite hard. And that's very difficult to do, yeah. So maybe one day that you have something nice in your lunchbox and you've shared it before with your friends, but you haven't expected them to do something back in return for you. Anything else? Faithfulness is also important in a good friendship, Lynn. Mm. Because without, without that, we can often feel quite lonely and left out. It's nice to have somebody that you know you can just go and talk to, talk about your worries with. And that can be trust as well, mm. can't it? Absolutely. You can also trust somebody that you know will be there for you. Yeah. But sometimes we do fall out with our friends, whether we mean to or, or not. Sometimes we can get a bit grumpy and upset and maybe say the wrong thing. And that's not always a good thing. No. And on that note, then, I'm off to help a, f help a friend out at the moment. So I'm going to leave Lynn uh, to tell you a Bible story all about friendship. I'll see you soon, Lynn. Bye, Jules. I want to tell you a story about Jesus and his disciples who were out walking one day. And when they, Jesus was walking around preaching, he would often go and call in on certain villages. And this is a story about that. Jesus entered a town called Capernaum. It was the second time he had visited, and the people knew that he could heal the sick. So lots of people came from nearby villages, so many that the house was full. There were even people crowding round the door. Now there was a paralysed man who had four friends. They had also heard that Jesus could heal the sick and they were desperate for their friend to be healed. 
So they decided to carry him to Jesus. It was a long way. And when they got there, could they get in? No. Could they move through the crowd? No. What were they going to do? They had come this far and they were hot and tired and now they couldn't get to see Jesus. They walked round to the right but couldn't get through the crowd. They tried the left but there was too many people. So what was left? One of the friends looked up and saw the stairs that run along, alongside the house that lead up to the roof. Let's take him up to the roof. But what can we do when we get there? Asked another friend. Get some rope and we can lower him down. We can remove some of the roof tiles. So they got some rope, they climbed up to the roof, carrying their friend, and began to remove the tiles until they had made a hole big enough to lower him down. When Jesus saw the faith of his friends, he said to the paralysed man, Friend, your sins are forgiven. Get up, take your mat and go home. And that's what the man did. He got up, walked out of the house, found his friends and walked home praising God. Now, that's what I call friendship. Carrying somebody a long way because you desperately know that you want to get your friend healed. I'd like to finish with a prayer. So if you'd just like to close your eyes for a moment of silence, we will pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for our friends, for all the fun we have together, for all the times we can meet in school. And Lord, when we are allowed, we can meet out of school. Sometimes, Lord, we aren't always nice and kind to our friends and we can get upset and we can upset them. Help us to be nice and more thoughtful to our friends. And when we do fall out, help us to find the strength to say sorry and sort our problems out. Amen. <laughs>